Togo government suspends international travels for cabinet members and hands of Paris titles for effective implementation of 2020 budget. Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation announces the discovery of hydrocarbon deposits in the upper bailway through Gongola Basin in the northeastern part of the country. Nigeria is a part of the community of nations and has signed on all of the international agreements to ensure that we give equal opportunities to boys and girls. Plus, Nigeria celebrates International Day of the Girl Child, Action Against Child Marriage and Lack of Access to Education in Focus. Hello and thanks for joining us on the news at nine. We're broadcasting live from Abuja on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I'm Rhoda Anona. Reading with me tonight, I have Jennifer Igwe in Lagos and Diba Barise Doma Waike is in Port Harcourt. Thank you once again. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, has announced the discovery of hydrocarbon deposits in the Kolmani River, well, two of the upper Benue through Gongola Basin in the northeastern part of the country. In a release by the Acting Group General Manager, Public Affairs Division, Samson Makonji, the corporation says preliminary reports indicate the discovery consists of gas condensate and light sweet oil of api gravity ranging from 38 to 41 found in stacked reservoirs of Yode, Bima sandstone and pre-Bima formations. NNPC reveals the computation of hydrocarbon volume is ongoing and will be announced in due course. The corporation says it has deployed world-class cutting-edge technologies, including surface geochemistry, ground gravity, magnetic stress field detection, full sensor gradiometry, aerial survey to de-risk exploration in the frontiers basing and plans to drill additional wells for full evaluation of hydrocarbon volume in the Gongola basin. The Calabar port is coming alive after eight years of receiving the Magusa vessel from Spain, made possible by Eco Marine Terminals Limited, the concessionaires of the port. Atibong Basi reports on expected ripples as a result of the birthing of this vessel on the economy of the eastern flank of the country and the nation as a whole. The birthing of MV Boris in Calabar is a significant milestone achieved through the strategic marketing of Eco Marine Terminals Limited, a terminal concessionaire in Calabar Port. The vessel, which has a length of 116.23 meters, gross tonnage of 6,569, and net tonnage of 2,000. 807.4 is working for a Spain-based Magisa. The vessel securely anchored at ECM terminal. Currently, Calabar Channel has a draft of 6.4 meters at high tide and stakeholders are urging the NPE to urgently take steps to complete the dredging to the advertised draft of 9.4 meters to attract regular and bigger tonnages. Uh, shipping agents, they went as far as to Calabar, Port Harcourt, uh, Uweri, Onicha, to sensitize, because those are the uh, people who are uh, businessmen and women around this place. Okay, you need to go out there and create an awareness that Calabar Port is open for business. To further facilitate patronage and easy evacuation of cargoes, the people are appealing to government to ensure quick completion of the awarded road contract of federal roads connecting the south-south, south-east and north-central zones from the state. In Calabar, Achibombasi, NTA News. Now, sequel to the presentation of the 2020 appropriation bill by President Mohamed Buhari to the National Assembly, the President has directed the immediate suspension of international travels by all cabinet members and heads of government agencies to enable the ministers personally lead the process of budget defence at the National Assembly. A statement from the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation explains that the suspension of such travels will enable top government 
functionaries and heads of agencies of the executive arm provide the required cooperation with the legislature in order to ensure timely passage of the appropriation bill. Consequently, ministers who have already secured approval to travel are by this presidential directive required to revalidate such approvals with Mr. President after confirming the schedules of appearances with the relevant committees of the National Assembly. Meanwhile, all ministries, departments and agencies of government have been directed to liaise with relevant committees of the National Assembly to know their schedules of budget defence. We turn attention now to the legislature as the legislative agenda of the Ninth House of Representatives has been unveiled with a commitment by House members to engender reforms that put citizens at the centre of activities in order to encourage participation and involvement in law-making process. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports. Unveiling of the 15-point document, a roadmap which points out the direction of the Ninth House of Representatives on this journey of what the House describes as one of shared ideals to positively impact the well-being of Nigerians. The agenda include social justice, anti-corruption, security, gender equity, economic growth, development and job creation, all of which the House hopes to improve on in the next four years through legislative reforms. The Minister of Environment, Mohammed Mahmoud Abubakar, and the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, see the agenda as one that captures shared ideals of giving Nigerians a better deal. Crafted, coordinated, and put together for the benefit of everybody, Nigeria and Nigerians. We have the same mission, and that mission is a mission to take Nigeria to greater heights in the next four years. Speaker House of Representatives Femi Gbajai says service to the public in the area of politics demands total and unwavering commitment to make a difference in the lives of the people, as failure is not an option. We will seek through legislation and oversight, engagement and collaboration, the achievement of a kinder, gentler, more prosperous nation, so that we may leave as our legacy a bequest of love and promise greater than anything else that has come before. The ceremony attracted the presence of Gali Umar Naabba, a former Speaker of the House of Representatives, among other dignitaries. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali. NCA News. Meanwhile, the Nigeria Air Force is poised to achieve its required military capacity towards addressing contemporary security challenges with the passage of a bill for the establishment of Air Force Institute of Technology. The Chief of Air Staff Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar at a meeting on the formation strategic requirement with the Senate on Committee on Air Force noted that the institute will serve as a catalyst for Air Force excellence. National Assembly correspondent Abdullah Aminu has details. Administration of resources for proper functioning of the Air Force personnel as enshrined in the Nigeria's constitution, legislative oversight and assessment of the country's Air Force activities in the fight against insurgency are issues the meeting between the Senate and top Air Force officials discussed. Without the appropriate appropriation and the resources required to get the Air Force functioning, I don't think the Nigerian Air Force will, will have been able to discharge its mandate as per 10 in the Nigerian Constitution. We can begin to uh, work, you know, together in the overall interest of this country. To the senators, the tax of protecting the country's territorial integrity needs inputs from all Hence, the need for proper legislation to build an air service that all Nigerians will be proud of. Meanwhile, the Senate Committee on Tertiary Institutions and Tet Fund, with Education Minister of State Chukwe Meka Wajiuba and heads of all federal institutions, have met to discuss issues bedeviling the country's education sector. It required the involvement of each and every person so as to avoid those bottlenecks that we were used to before. The Senate is expected to guide us, lead us in the direction they expect the 
country to go, being the elected representatives of our people. The nice Senate has as its agenda to tackle the identified educational challenges from the office of the President of the Senate down to the committee level. From the National Assembly, Abdullahi Aminu, NTA News. From legislature, we turn attention to the judiciary as the Court of Appeal sitting in Abuja has dismissed the appeal of Dino Milai against the judgment of the tribunal that nullified his election. In a judgment, a three-man panel of justices led by Justice Abubakar Dati Yahya dismissed the appeal for lack in, in merit. The appellate court ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission to conduct fresh election in Kogi West Senatorial District within 90 days. The State and National Assembly Election Petition Tribunal, sitting in Abuja on August 23, 2019, nullified the election of Dino Milaye. The APC and its candidate in election, Smart Adeyemi, had approached the tribunal alleging manipulation and non-compliance with the Federal High Court order, which ordered that the election result be collated in Kaba, the headquarters of the district. The party and its candidate proved before the trial court that collation of results for the district was done in Lokoja. A federal capital territory high court sitting in Abuja has ordered the former chairman of the pension reform task team, Abdul Rashid Mena, and his son, Faiza, be detained in custody of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, pending the conclusion of the ongoing investigation. The order followed an expertise application by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. The order empowered the commission to remand the defendant in its custody for an initial period of 14 days. Mena and his son were arrested in Abuja by the Departments of State Services and handed over to the EFCC for further investigation and persecution on allegation of fraud and money laundering. You're watching the Network News at 9 on the NTA. We'll take a first break. We have more report right after this, so stay with us. Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, Al Haji Lai Mohammed, cordially invites members of the general public to a special town hall meeting on security. Date, Tuesday, 15th October 2019. Time, 10 a.m. Venue, Katsina State Local Government Commission Conference Room, Kaita Road, opposite State House of Assembly, Katsina State. Dickness Grace Isu Gekwe, Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Announcer. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Kenny. You feel make 10 tops by this time next week? Sharp, sharp. Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Talk to you. Don't get money now. Hurry up! My picking, how are you doing? Papa, I see me can remind you about that loan. Loan, I beg, I beg, I beg. Hello, Papa? Your move. Hello, sister of life. I, I won't remind you of that loan, eh? Hello? The number cannot be reached now. Hello, Aga. Your clothes already. Are you an entrepreneur looking for financing to grow your business? Here's good news. Development Bank of Nigeria now provides sustainable financing through commercial banks, microfinance banks, and other financial institutions with repayment terms of up to 10 years. Please do remember, paying back your loan in good time will give you access to more loans. Development Bank of Nigeria. Financing sustainable growth. <laughs> Channel where you watch just now, don't work out. Huh? No panic. Can you make no panic? You go do it by yourself, like ABC. Oh, yeah. Press the menu button on top of your remote. Scroll up and down till you see information central. Then press OK. Mm, press OK. Check the signal strength and quality. If the signal strength and quality pass 70, make you press the exit button, go back. Go advanced options, then choose installation, then go to reset and press OK. Yeah, press OK. Yeah. Wow, now you say fit catch all those channels with the one miss rule by yourself. <laughs> yes, make your groove for no loss. You see, as I do, I'm a bit. Huh? And I see, as I do, I'm. Go TV, live it, love it. <laughs> and I see, as we do, I'm. Hey, bro, what's, good? Uh, what's up, man? Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. No, man, wait. wait. Show sure, send one device okay.
Enjoy more data than before on Airtel Home Broadband. Get up to 160 gigabytes on routers with 25,000 Naira and 55 gigabytes on Airtel MiFi's with 12,000 Naira. More data, more you. Reliable home broadband by Airtel, the smartphone network. The Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Shamsuna Ahmed, hereby invites all ministers, permanent secretaries, heads of federal government ministries, departments and agencies, representatives of state and local governments, private sector operators and associations, and other relevant stakeholders to a public presentation and breakdown of the highlights of the 2020 budget proposals laid before the National Assembly by the President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari. Date, Monday 14th, October 2019. Time, 10 a.m. prompt. Venue, Main Auditorium, Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning Complex, Abuja. Announcer, Ben Nakabweze, Director General, Budget Office of the Federation. Welcome to Adeleke University, a faith-based learning institution located in the serene and historic town of Idi, Oshun State, Nigeria. Running on the well-thought vision of its founding fathers to improve lives and society, the institution offers affordable and quality education. We are currently offering admission into our faculties of science, engineering, law, and art. We are also offering entry into the Faculty of Basic Medical Sciences and the Faculty of Business and Social Science. Our College of Postgraduate Studies offers you the chance to earn your master's and doctorate's degree in over 30 disciplines. For more inquiries, please visit www.adilikauniversity.edu.ng. You can also call 0806-820-2021 Adilika University Education Excellence Character Hey you! And are you are to talk to? Mr. Sabi you now. It's in day your mind, Abi. The person with them go help us. Baba Torosa, Shangalo, Oga Lekuva, Mr. Sabi. And you know if it carry last for this one. A spirit that's a pull-up! We crawl before him walk out. So don't look, no help anybody. No dolly, no. So go for him. Go for football. Go for all Syria on the League of Marches live. Go for Gold TV Max. <laughs> You're welcome back. And if you've just joined us, you're watching the news at nine on the network service of the NTA. For Nigeria to attain self-sufficiency and rapid sustainable economic growth, all tiers of government must join in the crusade for alternative economic earnings away from the traditional oil revenue. To this end, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo says the current administration is marching words with action with social intervention schemes and agricultural revolution. He was speaking at the close of the 18th meeting of the National Council on Development Planning in Asaba, Delta State. Elo Agbra has the report. In the past three days, the capital city of Asaba has witnessed the convergence of economic think tanks from various parts of the country. The objective is to ensure that zero oil policy is instituted across all tiers of governments as part of the diversification strategy for sustainable economic growth. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Osiba, just told the gathering that government is working out deliberate economic policies that will sustain the paradigm shifts in the diversification process. The reason for diversification of our sources of earning is because oil at whatever price, whatever price, cannot deliver jobs or even enough money to build infrastructure and answer the human capital development issues and problems that we have. The states, just as the federal government is in doing, is doing must engage in careful and well thought out strategic planning in order to articulate and implement priorities derived from such thinking and from such planning. We have to look at comparative advantage. Every state must determine what is, where it has a comparative advantage and focus on those areas. For states to achieve economic growth, the governor of Delta State, 
Senator Ifan Yokoa says fiscal discipline and effective budget implementation is key. The observation of fiscal rules is the first step to achieving, achieving fiscal sustainability. First, the annual budget of states must be derived from the fiscal strategy paper in line with the fiscal responsibility law. Budget funding and performance could be a mirage under a mono economy. Therefore, the Minister of State's Budget and Economic Planning, Slem Agba, is optimistic that the outcome of these intellectuals will be critical in national planning. The theme of this year's event is state fiscal sustainability and economic diversification in Nigeria. Hello, Agra, NCA News. President Mohamed Buhari has called for stiffer penalties to prevent girls from being abused in schools. In his reaction to the recent high-profile revelation of sexual abuse cases in institutions of higher learning in the country, President Buhari noted that the undercover report at the institutions has poured an amendment to the nation's law. President Buhari said such proposed amendments passed by the legislature will get his support as long as they conform to the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He urged law enforcement agencies and school administrator, administrators to take up such cases with seriousness and ensure that perpetrators face the consequences of their actions. The president also said survivors and their families should avoid cover-up wherever, whenever they are called. Nigerian women and girls have joined the rest of the world to commemorate this year's International Day of the Girl Child, seeking to address the challenges confronting them. A mega rally campaign held by the Nigerian women pressed for against, uh, actions against child marriage and denial of access to education. Momso Damian Dati reports. <laughs> Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Society organizations, development partners from the United Nations, religious groups, mothers, concerned parties, and girls from different parts of Abuja converging in solidarity for the Nigerian girl child. Here, no age or class, no barrier or limitation to the excitement on these females as they flank their write-ups and inscriptions to drive home their demand and expectations. Now I'm your sister and your daughter. Tomorrow I'm your wife and the mother of all mankind. And I hope everybody knows it's illegal to marry any child. He'll go to jail. Even the parents that gave the child out will go to jail. We need scholarship. The Honorable Minister is leading us not just in Abuja, in 12 other states. She menstruates every month. When a girl goes to school and there's no place for her to take proper hygiene, she stays back from school and it affects her. Nigeria is a part of the community of nations and has signed on all of the international agreements to ensure that we give equal opportunities to boys and girls. The Minister of Women Affairs we emphasize her stand that there will be no going back on this one. Today we celebrate the global takeover where girls get the chance and are very ready to take over key roles in education, sports, business, politics, social media, and even in the military. Momso Damien Lati, NT News. It is believed that there are millions of young girls across Nigeria who are gifted and intellectually endowed with ideas to prefer solutions to challenges in the country. The platform to express themselves is, however, lacking. Some concerned Nigerians, however, set to change this narrative by providing a platform through Nyamata Arewa, initiative for the Northern girls to showcase their intellect to the world. Again, here is Momso Damian Dati. From the nooks and crannies of Abuja, across different schools, public and private, these schoolgirls between ages 14 and 19 are converging on the one roof to spark up another girl's synergy, to interact and share ideas that will help the region. Now, the likes of Mariam Waziri, an indigenous of Borno, and in school for the gifted Gwagwalada, is relating with her namesake Mariam Usman from Kanu and in GSS Babuchi. We drag it here to adjust it. We just met her. She's okay, she's jovial. 
she's, I don't know, she's nice. My name is Maria Musman. She's Miriam too, and she's nice. Looking on how to write this, a Martin Ariwa on the laptop. He's teaching us how to do it. These two, like all the girls in this hall, are to work in teams to proffer solutions to real-life challenges confronting the girl child and youth, especially in the north, using ICT, robotics, or communication. In the seas now, plastic always goes there, and they are not biodegradable. With the youths of now, we can create tags, and then we can post pictures of social media of us picking up waste and trashing them. Our parents should know that we Northern girls, we also have human rights that everybody is entitled to. We should not be giving up to marriage as at this early age. The program is a very good way of promoting girl child education. And Martin Ariwa, Hackerton is the one setting out to empower the northern girls for a brighter tomorrow. The young girls have what it takes to proper solutions that Nigeria can actually put to good use. The two Mariams and their colleagues are full of smiles as they take home lots of prizes for their efforts. These are set the stage for a new hashtag, Girls in Charge, which is expected to change the life of northern girls for good. Momso Damien Ati, NTN News. Still staying with issues on the International Day of the Girl Child, President's Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, Comrade Quadri Olaleye, has charged parents to come together in fighting the cause of the girl child in the society. He said this during an event put together by the union in Abuja. Hawa Gimba has details. Addressing the participants, President, Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, Comrade Quadri Olaleye, emphasized the need for the girl child to be empowered in every aspect of their lives. We are not going to give ordinary training or education to our girls. So they are going to be well skilled so that they can face the challenge ahead. Chairperson of the Trade Union Congress, Women Commission, has a tribal advised stakeholders to encourage the girl child on the need to be self-reliant. Over time, we all know that we've always not, not had this opportunity of being treated like the boys. Um, I know undoubtedly you would believe it that even in some communities in our own country, some people still believe the girl child shouldn't be educated because if you educate her, she becomes another family's asset. But that is not true. Just make up your mind. You will get there. Women are unstoppable. Some of the children spoke on their needs. I want them to have the girl child because it's not all of us that is in school. So they should go to other communities and give them free education and they should teach them skills that they will know. I want to be empowered. I don't just want to be empowered. I want other girls out there to also be empowered. The 2019 International Day of the Girl Child has as its theme, empowering the girl child for better tomorrow. How NTA News. Now in security, nine students of Government Day Secondary School, Guagwada, in Chikung local government area of Kaduna State, who were abducted Thursday morning on their way to school, have been rescued by the troops of Operation Thunderstrike. A statement by the Deputy Director, Army Public Relations Officer, One Division, Nigerian Army, Colonel Eid Idima, indicates that the troops who were on routine patrol in the general area received information that some bandits terrorizing the Abuja Kaduna the highway had relayed some students on their way to school and abducted them. It says troops immediately swung into action and gave the bandit a hot chase. Following the firefight, one of the bandits was neutralized while the rest campered into different directions of the forest with gunshot wounds. The students abducted by the bandits were rescued safely and reunited with their families. Items recovered from them include one AK-47 rifle with seven rounds of 7.6 MM special ammunition and a pump action gun with 10 cartridges. In a related development, troops also dealt decisively with bandits in an ambush at Soho Gaya in Chiku local government area of Kaduna State during the ambush. Two bandits were neutralized while one rifle was recovered. The general officer commanding one division, Nigerian Army, Major General Faruk Yahaya, has commended the efforts of the troops and urged them to continue to pursue and neutralize bandits in one division area of their responsibility. This is the network news on the NTA timeout to link up with Jennifer in our uh, 
Lagos studio. Jennifer, it's over to you. Thank you, Rhoda, and welcome to Lagos. Now, investigations are ongoing to unravel the cause of the collapse of a two-story building in Abidjan area of Lagos, leaving four people injured. Imole Ayo Tukede reports that no life was lost. Information gathered revealed that before the structure caved in, five Togolese laborers were living in the building. At the time the building collapsed, four of the occupants got trapped in the rubble until neighbors came to their rescue. We were right there already. We are not seeing that. They see that people in there inside there. So we begin to bring our saw, our things to, to cut it. We need to cut them and bring the people out. Out of the four casualties, one was said to be seriously injured while the remaining Many three sustained injuries. Yes, and then inside, my body can't depend me. I can't come back from inside. I can't sit down for here. As I sit down like this, I can't hear bullet from inside. I can't see what's in the apple. I can't go look there. I can't see see the house nine four. The collapsed building drew the attention of the Commissioner for Fiscal Planning and Urban Development, Idris Salako, and the Director General of Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, Lasema. Our assessment shows that the land itself is not even um, enough to carry the structure that is being put on it. The capacity is a waterlogged area, a swampy area is waterlogged. We notice that the materials they use, the quality of material is poor. There is no professional supervision on site. I'm going to treat them adequately because safety of life is paramount to this administration. Negotians have been warned to stop removing caution tapes and signs placed on faulty structures as offenders will henceforth be prosecuted. In Lagos, in Moli Ayotokide, NTA News. And on waterways, the National Inland Waterways Authority has begun the demolition of shanties built on its right of ways. Dr. Guyame reports that the move is aimed at addressing issues impeding safety and development of Lagos waterways as efforts towards resolving their papa gridlock continue. Statistically, about 50% of boat accidents are caused by the activities of unregulated fishermen who abandon their fishing nets in the water. This remains a major cause of damage to boat outboard engines. These fishermen reside in communities like this one in Oimbu, forming a cluster of shanties as the base of their operations. However, following a series of engagements between Niwa and the fishermen, the illegality of their fishing operations were enumerated Hence, this demolition exercise. Aside the pollution and illegal dredging activities going on here, security is also a huge concern. A lot of complaints, a lot of letters from our clients complaining about these people. You've been here severally to talk to them. You can see there's a canal just adjacent where their uh, shanties are being built. They blocked the channel. Having been served an eviction notice five months ago, the vision of the agency is to transform the area into a commercially viable center of trade and passenger services. In Lagos, Dotun Ogmiemi, NTA News. And for business news, Abola De Salami is on standby. Abola De. Thank you, Jennifer. Good evening and welcome to the business news segment. Nigeria's total non-oil export earnings during fourth quarter of 2018 amounted to 1.16 billion naira, representing 1.5%. Thus, percentage level stakeholders in the export industry say is expected to increase if Nigeria leverages on the Africa continent of free trade agreement signed by President Mohamed Buhari. The non-oil export data disclosed by the Central Bank of Nigeria shows that food products increased by 39.1%, industrial 3.7%, while mineral subsectors had 2.5% increase. Well imagine that the countries, neighboring countries on the West African zone are our primary export market. What Nigeria is looking at at the moment is to ensure that there is a competitiveness engendered in the Nigerian manufacturing industry that allows us to compete favorably before the full implementation of the AFCFTA agreement. It is traders that make markets. 
Today, it is estimated that 40 to 60 billion of intra African trade is conducted by informal traders. Several steps taken by the federal government to grow the nation's non-oil revenue base has resulted in various policy review towards promoting intra africa trade and industrialization. Investors lose 220.85 billion naira week on week as the market dipped further by 0.19%. Here is Friday's details. Trading of stocks all through the week struggled with sale pressure as the market had the week all bearish. Friday was not an exemption as the market dropped by 0.19% to close the all share index at 26,533.78 basis points. Volume of shares traded finished at 117 million, valued at 1.5 billion naira, which changed hands in 2,122 deals. With market capitalization of 12.9 trillion naira. FBNH, ICO, and Guarantee all closed in the green line, while Nigerian breweries, Dangote Cement, and Guinness depreciated in figures. On sectoral performance, NSC Banking and Insurance finished in the green, appreciating by 0.10% and 0.50%, while NSC Consumer Goods, Industrial and Oil and Gas declined in figures by 0.87%, 0.22% and 0.10%. And that's it on business news. Rhoda in Abuja will be back with the rest of the news after this commercial break. Please stay with us. Start your day easier and happier with LG Inverter. Gain peace of mind with an efficient laundry cycle. Feel cooler air even at midday without any worries. Enjoy mealtime with food kept fresh all day long. The LG Inverter enriches your everyday life. Better Inverter, LG Inverter. We be seen now today or four days when my girls won't come visit me. I need to come go expire. Oh, but my guys, they can't follow me watch this match. I must want four the hand. Hey! Hey, be long. Hey, what's happening now? Sorry to disappoint you, but my subscription don't expire. The match is not on my Go TV package. Now you all be that. I beg, give me your phone. I think I show you how you go take Dua for my Go TV app for your phone. Life is so much easier with my Go TV app. Make payments, clear error messages, change oh, wow. your package. You can also check your due dates and keep abreast oh, wow. of your payment history. Oh. The, call. Yeah. the new My Go TV app is everything you need in one place. So what are you waiting for? Download My Go TV app now from Google Play or App Store to enjoy the easy life. Go TV, live it, love it. What we are really cultivating here is a better future for all Nigerian women, all and it's not always easy. Panadol Extra relieves headache, backache, joint pain, toothache and menstrual pain. The pain is worth it. Let's come together as we celebrate the uniqueness of our cultural diversity, showcase our creativity and ingenuity. It's the National Festival for Arts and Culture, NAFEST 2019, in the Asian city of Benin, Edo State, the heartbeat of the nation. Our royalty, our pride. Holding 19th through 26th October 2019. Highlights will include drama, children poetry performance, essay writing competition, crafts competition, indigenous cuisine, traditional wrestling, indigenous fabrics in royal apparel, cultural quiz competition, board games, and lots more. Oh yes, it's the National Festival of Arts and Culture, NAFEST 2019, Edo State, Nigeria. Holding 19th to 26th October 2019. We are Celebrating our heritage. October Olusha Gurunshire, Director General, National Council for Arts and Culture, Anosa. NCA Abelkuta is 40. Come, let's celebrate 40 years of impressive TV broadcasting at the grassroots. On Thursday, 17th October 2019, there'll be a lecture titled Lens and Sound, Television, a tool for social reorientation and good governance. Guest lecturer, Professor Oluyemisi Oluremi Obiladi, Professor of Education and Women's Studies, Obafemi Awolowo University. Special
special guest of honor, His Excellency, Prince Dakwa Abiodun, Governor of Ogun State, Royal Father of the Day, His Royal Majesty, Oba Adedotunare Mubadebo, the Alake and Pramontrola of Egbaland, Chairman of the Occasion, Chief Olatunde Anyela Abudu, Mayego of Egbaland, Chief Host, Malam Yakubo Ibn Mohammed, Director General, NCA. Other activities lined up for the occasion include an array of awards to distinguished entities held to work on Saturday, 12th October 2019, while Innovative Match comes up on Tuesday, 15th October 2019 at MKO Abiola Stadium. Come, celebrate 40 years of impressive television at the grassroots with us and take NCA Abelco to the next level. Your information, they important, just like your identity. Now the only way we fit take hala you make you go browse easy.gotvafrica.com. Sign in with your IUC number and mobile number and scroll down to personal details and address. Then check well to see say everything bam. You fit change the one we not correct. To finish everything, just click the save button and it don't finish. Thank you. I make sure see my phone number they correct. That's not why Go TV fit call me, make I come collect my own and wolf. Angel! <laughs> I time for my phone in that way because now my correct phone number they for boom. <laughs> go TV. Live it. Love it. Now look me again, no. Make you go do your own. You're welcome back. Nasarawa State has agreed to work in partnership with the Federal Capital Territory Administration in the areas of traffic decongestion, security and revenue generation. This position was reached at an interactive session between Nasarawa State Government and the FCT Minister, Shwaibo Noto Yakubu tells us more. The federal government is proposing to build a bus terminal and railway line to ease traffic, create additional rules to complement the FCT administration's effort at tackling the challenge along the axis. First. So it's because of our closeness actually to the federal capital and the fact that the you know, majority of uh, your workers in the federal capital are actually our tenants in Nasarawa State. Sure. So one of the reasons we decided to come is to host you, is to thank you, you know, for all the support that we have received in the past. And to remind you that Nasarawa State is still overstretched as a result of that. And one of those areas of being overstretched is areas of logistics. So I'm happy when you said clearly that you are going to make a presentation, especially on the roads. FCT Minister Mohammed Musa Bello restated determination to address unauthorized car parks, roadside trading, among other illegal activities along the road that contributes to traffic gridlock. So what we had commenced before you came on board as governor is to see how we can improve the linkages between the two communities. Uh, as a matter of fact, to leverage on the enormous number of people around there and the economy activity going there. Presentations were made by FCT officials on measures and proposals for addressing the challenges along the axis of Nyanya and Nasarawa State. Shwaibu Onozeyakubu, NTA News. Running issues based campaign in accordance with the provision of the law was the focus when the People's Democratic Party inaugurated its National Campaign Council and a reconciliation committee for the November 16 governorship election in Bielsa and Kogi states. Timothy Yusuf reports that the party's national chairman, Uche Sakandus, performed the ceremony in Abuja. <laughs> That inauguration represents a charge on the party's governorship candidates to kickstart their campaigns ahead of the November 16 governorship poll in Bayelsa and Kogi states. The governor of Bochi state, Senator Bala Mohammed, is chairman of the Bayelsa State Campaign Council, while the governor of Oyo state, Sheyi Makinde, head start of Kogi state. We want to assure the party that we will do our best in Bayelsa. We will do you proud. Former President of the 8th Senate, Dr. Bukola Saraki, 
is chairman of the PDP National Reconciliation Committee. His mandate is to reconcile aggrieved members from the fallout of the party's governorship primary elections in Bayelsa and Kogi. The work with Kogi and Bayelsa starts the reconciliation, I believe also ends the reconciliation. The party's governorship candidates in Bayelsa, Senator Duoye Diri and Musa Wada for Kogi promised to run campaigns devoid of hate speech and violence. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. The Barbary is in Port Harcourt for us and uh, would give us more reports now. Over to you, the Barbary. Good and welcome to Port Harcourt. The federal government has assured host communities of OML25 of adequate social economic facilities and infrastructure necessary for modern community life in the 21st century. Special advisor to the president on Niger Delta Affairs, Ita Enang, gave the assurance when he came face to face with the condition faced by the people of oil bearing communities of OML25 in Kola Kingdom of River State. Dian Kume Ulolo completes the story. The removal of traditional injunction in OML25 by the King of Okoria House of Belema and Ofoyama communities in Akutori Council area of River State signaled the beginning of a new dawn in the area. President Mohamed Ubuare, represented by Special Advisor on Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Ita Enang, noted that it is unacceptable for a community to contribute 44,000 barrels of crude to the nation's economy to be found in abject condition. We have seen it ourselves. I felt touched. We will provide complete community life for the entire Belema community and oil-bearing community. Most communities of OML25 noted that barely one week after the communities play host to the federal and state government and oil industry players, they believe that with the traditional reopening of the oil facility for production to commence, there will be a sustainable developmental partnership. In doing this, we wish to reiterate that this understanding, which has led to mutually beneficial relationship today, shall be based on international best practices and global standards. I thank them that they have now agreed. The hoisting of flags side by side by the group manager, National Petroleum Investment Management Services, further demonstrate a new beginning of sustainable peace. When we had the crisis, we knew what happened. The entire nation lost. But today, we can say, yes, the nation will start gaining again. The event featured presentation of proposal to the joint vector operators of OML25. From Belema community in agricultural local government area of River State, Yanukme Ulolo, NTA News. In our bids to enhance and strengthen the governance of migration and providing reintegration assistance to Nigerian returnees, a sensitization workshop was organized by Nigerian Migration Service in collaboration with the International Organization for Migrants and the European Union. Erika Evi has details. The Assistant Controller General Nigerian Migration Service, Funke Adoi, while presenting the National Border Management Strategy Lecture, is calling for collaboration with security agencies and international bodies in order to tackle the pressure of border management and its security challenges, noting Nigeria's strategic position in West Africa. Today's event is to take the message down to the rural communities to the different geopolitical zones to ensure that most of our stakeholders at the local level are well aware, they are properly sensitized of the renewed vision. Controller of Nigerian Migration Service, Cross River State Command, O.K. Ezegu, says proper border management strategy will facilitate legitimate travel, straight checking human trafficking, criminals, and terrorists. Cross River State may have been chosen of this is peculiarity and strategic location within international and waterways. Stakeholders urge the government to set up adequate infrastructure to handle influx of migrants from neighboring countries. In Calabar, Erika Evi, NTA News. And as our from Paul Tarkot, Network News will continue in Abuja right after the break. Good evening. and ART 
in a rare collab with Hotspot are set to beam the earth-shaking encounter live to millions of Nigerian fans as the Super Eagles of Nigeria take on the Samba Boys of Brazil in a Grade A FIFA friendly next Sunday, October 13, 2019. For sponsorship and commercial bookings, please contact Fitz on 0703-642-7156 and Rookie on 0708-164-9703. NTA, you can't beat the rich. AIT, first with sport. Hot sports, masters of the game. Succeeded to pull a galaxy of stars from the north, south, east to the west, and central Africa. And also those that are domiciled beyond the shores of Africa, under one roof. Mr. Sabi, and you don't think carry last for this one. A spear into the top corner. We Sabi say picking will crawl before him waka. Still don't look, no help anybody. No dolly, no. So go for him. Go for football. Go for all Syria on the League of Marches line. Go for Go TV Max. Thank you for being there. President Muhammadu Buhari will launch the emblem for the 2020 Armed Forces Remembrance Day celebration on Wednesday, the 16th of October 2019 at the Presidential Villa Abuja. The Minister of Defence, Bashiru Magashi, announced this at a news conference heralding the annual celebration to honour falling heroes of the nation's civil war. Other events to mark the day include Jumat service on Friday the 10th and interdenominational church service on Sunday, the 12th of January, 2020. Peak of the celebration will be laying the wrist by Mr. President and other dignitaries at National Senator Abuja on the 15th January, 2020. President Mohamed Buhari has congratulated Ethiopian Ethiopians and the Ethiopian Prime Minister Abi Hakmed, declared as the winner of the 2019 Nobel Peace Prize on Friday in Oslo, Norway. President Buhari in a statement says the gesture will sport more interest on issues of peace in Africa. The remarkable Global 100 Peace Prize Award was attributed to a decision to end a 20 years conflict between two African countries, Ethiopia and Eritrea. President Buhari calls for enhanced peaceful coexistence and deliberate efforts by governments and the people of the African continent to sustain harmony within and between countries of the continent. Now, Sports Super Eagles intensified training in Singapore ahead of friendly match between Nigeria and Brazil. Kene Emma Budike has this and more on Sports Update. Nigeria's Golden Eaglets have started training in Sao Paulo two weeks before the kickoff of the FIFA Under-17 World Cup in Brazil. Nine officials and 25 players, which will be reduced to 21, will begin their quest for a sixth world title in Group B against Hungary on October 26. 
Meanwhile, Nigeria Super Eagles intensified training Friday ahead of the friendly match with Brazil at Singapore National Stadium on Sunday. Stoke City midfielder Oganekara Etebo is the latest withdrawal due to injury as the Brazilians were forced to a 1-1 draw by Senegal in a friendly plate on Thursday. A week-long FIFA Member Association referees course ended in Abuja Friday with about 50 participants taking through core areas in improved officiating guidelines of the sport. The program is part of FIFA's effort at sustaining the quality and growth of football across the globe. So the good thing is that you have very young referees. This is, this is because young referees are the future. Not only for, for Nigeria, Federation, but it's also for CAF and FIFA. The 8th Chief of Naval Staff National Women Championship is set to climax on Saturday at the National Stadium in Surulere, Lagos, with 176 swimmers in contention for medal rush in 28 event. Adeola Omokive reports that the Talent Discovery Championship drew participants from 12 states, 7 military and paramilitary formations and 3 clubs. Over 10 countries are set to participate in the 2019 Nigerian Ladies Open Golf Tournament at the IBB International Golf and Country Club Abuja. President, Ladies Golf Association of Nigeria, Economic Women, made this known in Abuja Friday when the association paid a courtesy call on the Minister of State for Power, Gode Jedi Abba. The 2018 edition was won by Zimbabwe. With sports update, Kenan Ima Abodike, NTA News. President Mahmoud Buhari commiserates with the family of Professor Emmanuel C. Edoze, economic advisor to former President Shehu Aliyu Shagari, who passed on at 82. In a statement, the president described the renowned economist and businessman and boardroom guru as a statesman whose contribution to nation building, both in private and public sector, will always be remembered. The president salutes the disease commitment to issues that directly impact on people, praying that his invaluable investments in humanity will continue to resonate. The death has occurred of evangelist Florence Obi Obasi, who was aged 55. A Christian workkeep will be held in Arana on the 12th of October 2019 at her family campan in Olacho, Okboma. Burial service will hold on the 13th of October at 9 a.m., while interment will take place at 11 a.m. same day. Let's take a quick check on the weather prospects. How it's been on Network News tonight. On behalf of the crew, we thank you for watching. I'm Rhoda Anonam.